Let's do a little demonstration on how to create an app that retrieves data from a database using C Sharp. So I'm going to create a new project. And this one I want to be a Windows desktop project. And so I'm going to do a Windows form app. I click next. And this one's going to be my cookbook project. And I will create that. Now I have this project and there's nothing in it yet. So I want to go ahead and add um, data sources here. So I'll click on my data sources and I have a data source already. So I'm going to pull my things database in and I want to get from this uh, two tables. I want to get my ingredients and my recipes. So add those. Now those are available and I can use these data sources. Additionally, I'm going to want to use my toolbox. So I'll do my view and I'm going to add the toolbox. You can see down here, toolbox, add that. So now I got my data sources and my toolbox. So my data sources, I want to pull over first my recipes and just drag over uh, um, at details view. Just drag this over here and drop it in. And this top little bar here, I want to get rid of that. So I'll click on this thing and I will just delete it. Take this thing over here and drag it over here. And now we've got this in place and I want to create a new um, tool strip. So I go down here and I add a tool strip drag it up here to the top and put it in place. All right, at this point, we might want to name the tool strip. I don't really care, so I'm going to leave it the same. But I want to take this recipe ID and this title and description. I want to make all these things read-only. So I'll click on this thing, and uh, in order to make it read-only, you go over to the properties, and you change it in behavior to read-only. So I got read-only and uh, change this to true for read only. And you can see it grays out. Now, what does that actually do in code? If you want to look at the code, you can do that. So it's in the form one designer CS. So I'll go ahead and I will look at this code, click on that. And you can see there's a section called Windows form designer generated code. I'm going to expand that and then scroll down to where the code was actually modified. Let's get this a little bigger. All right, so you can see these different components are being created. Each one, um, so I, I guess a bunch of them are created here, and after they're created, settings are put on each one. And that one was my recipe text box, recipe ID text box. And you can see right here, it now has this recipe ID text box, read only equals true. If I wanted to make it false, I could just change it right here back to false and it would change immediately. Other things you can see is your placement of items is right here. You can see this is 8146. And so if I wanted to move it to the right, I could just put in a number here um, or left, same thing. Um, same thing with sizes. Um, the tab indexes is when you press the tab key, which one is selected. All right, so there we go. That's the designer there. I'm gonna click on this next one. I can go over the behavior again, and I want to change the behavior to read only. True. And this one right here, I'm going to change the behavior to read only as well. Hang on a second, I'm on the right one. Description text box and behavior read only is, oh yeah. Now it is true. All right. And I can change the size of these things. Maybe I want the title a little bigger and maybe I want the description a lot bigger. I don't know. Okay. Now I want to be able to look up items and figure out where they are or retrieve them. So I'm going to click on this thing up here, get this tool strip, and I'm going to add a label. So this label, you can see it automatically has a name there. I can change the label text 
So I will change the label text to be um, recipe ID. And I am going to change, well, that's probably all I need. I don't really care what the uh, name of it is. I could change the tool strip name, but I don't really care. And next I want to add a text box. So this will be the box I can use to look up stuff. So I'm going to go change the text box and its name. I'm going to call this one because that's a really long name. So I'll go TS for tool strip TXT and this will be recipe ID. So I take a long one and make it longer. Well, not longer, same size. All right. So then you got that there. It's good. Um, so just gonna remember this name. So it's TS TXT recipe ID because I'm gonna be using that name later when I want to retrieve data from that. Now I'm going to put a button here and this button is gonna be my lookup button. So I probably wanna change the name of the button to be my lookup. So I will call this my TSBTN lookup. There we go. And I want to change the button so it's text. So it'll be lookup. And then I want to display it. So I will put the display style from image to text. So now it has the word lookup. All right, if I were to run this application right now, it would just display the first item and you wouldn't be able to scroll through it because I deleted those controls, but that's what it would do. Let's go ahead and shrink this a little bit, make it a little smaller and make it a little bit smaller. Okay. So I go ahead and run it. And it has this box and it says recipe ID one peanut butter jelly. I can put in number one here and do a lookup and nothing happens. We don't know that, but if I two, nothing happens. So I close that. Okay. So now the next thing I want to do is I want to make it so the lookup button actually does something. So how do I do that? Well, first I need to get into the, well, my things data set because I want to be able to look stuff up. So I go over here and I will right click and I will edit in data set designer. And then I can see these things here. I can create a new one, a new SQL query. So if I click on this one right here, what it's doing is it's doing the select statement. Um, so you can see the select statement or part of it. Anyway, it's cut off. Um, I can go in, right click this and I can do configure and I can see what the actual statement is that's being used. And that's great. Um, if you wanted to see it, it's actually stored in one of these files over here. It's in the um, XSD file. Um, so if I do view code, it will really not show me much of anything, which is pretty useless, but that's okay. Don't save. Um, but what I could do is pull it up in the I guess a uh, file manager and then look at the code there. And it's basically a bunch of XML with um, SQL embedded into it. But what we're going to do is just going to, this is where you got this graphical user interface. So let's just use it. So now I'm going to add a new query and I want to make this an SQL statement and I want to do a select statement. And what I want to do is I want to retrieve data from this, I want to get the recipe ID, the title and the description from my recipes, but I want to do it by my recipe ID. So I do where recipe ID equals, and I'm going to use this at recipe ID, which means that then I can pass in a value. And so I just go next and I want to do fill in by recipe ID. And I'll just go ahead and finish that. So now I've got this one where it's passing a value and it will retrieve just the recipe ID. So how do I use that? Well, when I 
use it, it's now called fill by recipe ID as opposed to fill. So if I go over here and I right click and I do view code, I can see my code right here. And there's this thing right here where it says fill. And so I want to do a fill by recipe ID, but I don't want to do it on load. I want to do it on click. So I go back over here and I double click on that and then it creates this thing right here, which is nice. I don't really care about that, but, and then I go back over here and I double click on the lookup and it creates this new one right here. So I take this line that's automatically generated and I just cut that and I put it over here. You'd want to put some try statements to make sure you don't mess anything up, but I'm not going to do that because I don't really care. By recipe ID. And then because it's now a fill by recipe ID, I can pass in the recipe ID. Swell, so, what is the recipe ID? Well, we don't really have it yet, but we do remember that we created this text field earlier. And our text field was something like TS, TXT, recipe ID. So we're going to get that. And it is loaded as a string. So I'll do string. And I'll just, I have a temporary string. So I will call this my recipe, recipe string equals. And this is going to be this dot ts txt recipe id dot text i need to now convert it into an integer because this is run is used an integer so I'll do int and when i do this i have to convert it i do you know, i'll actually have the name so recipe id equals and then this will be int 32 and I'm going to parse my recipe string. So I parse that then I can pass it over as this recipe ID a variable I just created. At that point, I can go ahead and um, save this and I can run it and it should work as long as I do it correctly. So I have this thing right here. I punch in a recipe ID of one and do lookup and it pulls up my peanut butter jelly sandwich. I put in two and look up and it pulls up my spam musubi. So then I have it, it's good to go. Next thing I wanna do is pull in the ingredients for my form. So I'll go back over here. I have this stuff displayed and I wanna put another data source in there. Um, not data source item, I just drag over the ingredients. Um, and I will move this right below it and I'll probably shrink it a bit because it doesn't look good like that. And you could remove columns and things like that, but we won't do that right now. We just want to get the general idea in here. And this thing automatically creates a load code, some load code when you put this in here. And so we want to take that load code and we want to remove it. So you can see this load code right here, but I'm just going to copy it over here or cut it out and put it down below this right here. And then I'll worry about it later. Okay. Now the next thing to do is to go back into my data set and edit the data set and add a new function. So recipe is good. Now we want to add something for ingredients. So we will add a query and we'll make an SQL query. It's going to be a select statement and we're going to add something where <coughs> recipe ID equals add recipe ID. Now at this point you could do a much cleaner, nicer statement. Um, I'm doing a where recipe ID equals recipe ID and one of the problems with this is if the if for some reason the recipe gets deleted but there are still ingredients for that recipe then it might still pull all that data and it might work kind of so you might have a situation where the recipe displays but 
or the recipe doesn't display, display, but the ingredients do display. And so you might want to actually have another, um, an inner join type thing where you have um, both tables joined together and then you can do it much cleaner, but I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to do it this way. All right, so I'll finish it up. And now I've got a recipe ID and I can do a select statement, use that select statement by passing in that value just like I did with the one for recipes. So I can close that, I'll save that. And now I go back over here to my code and this time I'm gonna do fill by recipe ID. You might think, well, they're the same name. Well, no, they're not quite the same name. They're in different objects. So one's the recipe table adapter and one is the ingredients table adapter. So same name, but different. All right, and then I pass over my recipe ID. And then it should load up. And I can go ahead and save everything and run it. And then it creates this thing right here and I can put my recipe number one and do a lookup. And you can see that in order to make a peanut butter jelly sandwich, I need bread, peanut butter, and jelly. And in order to make my spam musubi, I need spam, cowrie's rice, and seaweed. And that's how you do it. Um, go through there and you can clean up things, um, do try statements, make sure it doesn't crash. Um, you can remove all this commenting if you want. And if you wanted to go in and change things like placement of things where you, where they are, or if you want to change the tab order, you can update numbers there. You can change names. If you want your form to look differently, you can change everything else. Um, down here, you can change the name of the form so that it doesn't display form one. But basically what happens is you are creating all these objects right here in the top and then you're setting permissions on them and other things on them, and then you are loading them into your page. Way down here, you start adding them all into your form. And then it all works. And that's basically how you can use these Windows form application stuff to pull data and look at it and display it.